of dry bones. God and Ezekiel are having a conversation about the nation of Israel because it's not in Israel. It has been carried by Nebuchadnezzar into captivity. And Ezekiel says in Ezekiel 37 that God picked me up and he took me to a valley of bones. And he's showing Ezekiel a picture of the children of Israel. This valley of bones that he describes is not a connected skeleton. You look in this picture on the screen. What Ezekiel saw were scattered bones. There was a skull here and a jaw there. There was hands without fingers, feet without toes, legs and arms gone from spinal column. And God asks Ezekiel, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel seeing the despair and the fact that there's not even skin or muscles or ligaments or tendons and how scattered they are, Ezekiel as a very wise man says, God, only you know. He's saying with those words, you're the only one who can do it. So then God tells Ezekiel, I want you to prophesy. I want you to speak the word of the Lord to these bones. And what he tells those bones is that God is going to cause breath to enter those bones and those bones will live. Not only are those bones going to live, but God's going to restore them. He's going to put tendons and muscles and flesh upon them and they're going to come back to life and they're going to come back to life because when they come back to life, the world will know that God is the Lord. So Ezekiel 37 and 10, Ezekiel says, so I prophesied as the Lord commanded me. And when I prophesied, breath entered the bones and they lived and they stood up on their feet. And he said that these dry and scattered bones had become an exceedingly great army. Do you know what we call that army today? We call that army Israel. In 598, those bones started to get scattered. In 70 AD, the scattering accelerated. In 1948, those bones that were disconnected and scattered throughout the nations of the world came back to Israel and are now standing before you in 2023, an exceedingly great army in the land that God had given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. People want to say, I wish I could see a miracle. I wish I could see what it was like when God parted the Red Sea. Trust me, every time you see this flag flying over an army like this, and you understand historically where Israel came from to what it is today, you have seen a miracle work of the living God. But here's an even greater point in this circumstance. Five times in Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 14, five different times God clearly says these words to Ezekiel about the bones. God says, you will live. Say that with me. You will live. God says, I will cause you to live. I will call you out of your grave and you will live. I will lead you to the land and you will live. You will live and become an exceedingly great army for I am the Lord. I have spoken it. I will do it. This is the declaration of the Lord. The point that God is making is that when he says it, that settles it. Every dictator and every terrorist group and every warlord and every nation can plot and plan and God is going to laugh at your plan because if he said Israel lives, then Israel lives. The UN can vote and they can denounce and they can vote again. God does not need an ambassador in order to be heard because he is the God who controls the heavens and the earth. And he said, I am the keeper of Israel and I do not slumber and I do not sleep. If Israel lives, then Israel lives. The United States can stumble and stammer through another global crisis. God is not watching Washington, D.C. He's not waiting on our State Department. God is the God who said, if I declare it, I will do it. And Israel